being invited to serve on the SESI board and for me it was a dream come true because that's where the dream team was. When I think about all of the thought leaders of the day, uh, I think about Peter Ewell and Yuri Treisman and, and so many colleagues who were at the vanguard of thinking about student engagement, thinking about helping to have students be successful that are fully embracing diversity in all of its forms and thinking particularly about community colleges. And of course, I've been in this business for a number of decades now. And so the opportunity to kind of sit at the feet of the leaders of, of our day and, and very thoughtful people, very pragmatic people who are, are not only committed to the work, to the, the, the practice, to the, their craft, uh, but they're they're committed to the outcomes which is equally important and these are these are data scientists so to be able to interact and ask very thoughtful questions and to hear their responses and then to know that we're all focused on a common effort for guiding uh, the center and and making sure that we just continue to evolve as as students needs are, are emerging and evolving it's daunting because you're around people that are um have been historically really um, challenging and researching community colleges and just have such great ideas. You know, people that I've looked at as heroes and leaders and visionaries in this work for so many years. So it's, it's um, I'm a little bit of a cult-like groupie when I'm, when I'm in the room. I mean, there's so much uh, good conversation and energy and synergy that happens as a result of these innovative, visionary, really committed, dedicated community college um, experts and um, leaders that are in this room that um, it just makes the experience of being together, physically together, so rewarding because I always walk away with three or four great ideas that I wanna follow up with uh, from my colleagues that are on the board. I'm over there looking at the board members and thinking, yes, I cited that person in my dissertation and I cited that person in my last research paper and, and listening to their, their questions and the way that they think, it's incredibly stimulating uh, as far as like, what can we do for these students and this whole idea of, you know, why can't we do these things? Um, I, I just, I'm just in awe. I'm like girl fanning on everybody. I'm like, oh, wow, I get to see John Roosh today. Um, but it's just, it's incredible to be in a, in a room full of leaders who are so passionate and just every, every, you know, atom in their body, every molecule is geared toward thinking about how to improve community colleges. And it's just, it's, a, it's electrifying to me to, to be in that environment. But what I see who's there, Dr. Roosh, Dr. Bumpus, Dr. Tinto, and many other community college titans that we studied and researched and used their articles, their data, um, their experience to inform our own um, papers that we wrote while we were in, in college and working on our graduate and doctoral programs. Um, and even uh, whose work that we still use today as professionals to guide what we do is it's, it's amazing that, that I get that opportunity to sit at that table with these folks. And so I'm often sort of mesmerized and enthralled that, you know, I, I forget I'm in, on a board in that moment. And I, and I think that I'm a student who's learning uh, for them being, you know, a lifelong learner. Is, so that's a really interesting experience. And then I have to snap out of it and realize that I'm there as a contributor because I'm, I'm a president and I'm a chancellor and I have some important information to share, to be an active participant um, for this board to help SESI be better overall. One of the wonderful pieces about the board is that it truly is advisory board. They are there to help guide you, to help shape the center, to help you think about the future of the center. Another one of the wonderful things about the advisory board is that you had people who um, were practitioners. They were actually at an institution and they could say, this is what we need from the instrument. These are the questions we're asking nationally when I sit on the AACC board. These are the things we want to know about. Um, and then you had thought leaders and some of course were both, but I, the diversity in the board was really a gift. I think I was at 
Tallahassee Community College when it when it started. And some people said, hey, there's a group being formed and they may be looking for somebody who's interested in this. I said, so, so eventually, you know, I got, uh, Kate got me in and I got in touch. And lo and behold, the next thing I know, I'm on the board and, and I'm going to Texas for board meetings. And as I got in the room, I looked around and everybody who had written all the source books was on the, it's on the board. And I'm thinking, just go in there, be quiet, pay attention when they talk, take good notes, go home and sound smart, you know? And uh, it, was, it was the one meeting a year I would look forward to because there was no place else to go to get better information. You had the people who knew the most about student success in the room, talking about the research and the work they were doing. And they were, they were very candid and very open and very sharing. It was very, it was a huge camaraderie amount around everyone who was doing it. And then I came to realize my role was to simply describe what, what does this look like on the front lines? That I, I couldn't add anything to the research and I, I really couldn't do much. You know, you had Vincent Tinto and you had, uh, you know, so many people had done so much work at the time. And I realized, but I could share what it looks like. How do we communicate this to the students? How do they react? How are we packaging it for their benefit? And, uh, and I had a lot of fun sharing that.